Welcome to episode number eight of the Timmy Talks Duelist podcast series. And today I'm going to read to you an article that's a little bit different than the articles I've read so far. This is the Dark FAQs, and this came out in the Duelist number three. And it came out shortly after the release of The Dark, because The Dark was released in 1994 in August, and uh, this magazine came out in the fall of that year. So shortly after The Dark got released, obviously there were a lot of questions about how the new cards of The Dark worked, and I think this article is really interesting to kind of get a feel of the vibe of magic in those days. What were the players thinking, and what were the players confused with, and what were they trying to do with the new cards from the Dark Expansion set. So let's give it a read, shall we? The Dark, FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions Compiled by the Not Ready for Primetime Rules Team and written by The Fish of Paradox version 1.2 and this article is published in the Duelist number 3. Question 1 if I play Ashes to Ashes or Dust to Dust, can I choose to target only one creature or artifact? The answer, no. These cards specifically target two items each. You must fulfill the target requirement for either spell to be cast successfully. Question 2. What happens if I bring Ball Lightning into play and then place it in Taunus's coffin? The answer, even if Ball Lightning is placed in the coffin, it will die at the end of any turn it is brought back into play. Question 3. Will Blood Moon affect dual lands? The answer? Blood Moon will convert any non-basic land, all lands except forests, islands, mountains, plains and swamps, into mountains. Dual lands are not considered basic lands, so they will be converted. Question 4. If I use the Book of Raz a number of times in a turn, could it go below zero life points? The answer? No. The terms pay to life and lose to life indicate the same thing. As a general rule, you cannot pay or lose life points that you do not have. Question 5. Is the carnivorous plant a wall? The answer? Yes, the carnivorous plant is a wall. Although wall isn't part of the name, the phrase summon wall is on the card. Now, I would just like to break in here to add a little context. Obviously, you know, the, all these questions are from back in the day when these cards are completely new to the players. But this wall question is very interesting because up until Carnivorous Plant, all the walls had the word wall in their name. Think about it. Wall of Swords, Wall of Water, Wall of Shadows, Wall of Dust. So everything had the word wall in it. And this was the first wall that did not. So even though you can see it's a summon wall, people were used to seeing that wall in the title of the card itself, Carnivorous Plant did not. So some people actually played it as a creature until they find out that, hey, it's actually a wall and it cannot attack. Okay, that's all for me breaking in. Let's continue with question six. Question six. Do counters stay on the City of Shadows when I tap it for mana or are they removed? The answer, the counters stay on the card. They are not removed when you tap it for mana. Question seven. My opponent just played Cleansing, and I have a land with Consecrated Land on it. What happens? The answer? The Consecrated Land will protect the target land from the effects of Cleansing. No life cost needs to be paid to protect this land. Question 8. My opponent just hit me with a 10-point Fireball. I have two Dark Spheres in play, and I sacrifice them both. Do I take any damage? The answer? Damage prevention is resolved just like most everything else, sequentially. The first Dark Sphere sacrificed will prevent half of the 10 points of damage. Round it down. This leaves 5 points of damage unaccounted for. Next, the second Dark Sphere is sacrificed, preventing 2 points of damage. 2.5 rounded down. As a result, you will take 3 points of damage. Question 9. What happens if I pump more than 1 blue mana into deep water? Also, what happens if I have Mana Flare in play? Answer. First of all, no matter how much mana you put into deep water, your land will produce one blue mana instead of the regular mana it would produce. The same thing applies to multiple deep waters. Only one will affect the land. Second, Mana Flare. When used in conjunction with deep water, it will generate an additional blue mana on top of the one generated by deep water. Question 10. The activation cost of either of the dead's ability is zero. 
Does this mean that I can completely clean out my opponent's graveyard of creatures in one turn? The answer? No. Bear in mind that the Eater of the Dead untaps when it eats a creature in the graveyard. It cannot use this ability if it is already untapped. Question 11. When exactly do I get the plus 2 plus 0 oh from the giant shark? The answer? The bonus takes effect only when the blocking creatures have been declared. Question 12. Can I avoid the sacrifice cost of untapping the Leviathan by playing a Twiddle? Answer? Yes. Twiddle and similar untapping effects will allow you to untap the Leviathan for free. Question 13. Will Consecrated Land protect me from the effects of Mana Vortex? The answer? Consecrated Land protects your land from being destroyed. Mana Vortex requires that the land is sacrificed. A sacrifice is defined as a cost that cannot be prevented. Consecrated Land, therefore, will not protect the land from the Mana Vortex. Question 14. If I play Martyr's Cry, do the white creatures in the graveyard, the library, and the hand come out of play as well? The answer? No. Creatures in these areas are not considered in play. Only white creatures that are in the playing area will be removed from the game. Question 15. My opponent has attacked me with a Sarah Angel. Can I use the Maze of If to stop her from attacking? The answer? The Sarah Angel does not tap when she attacks, and the Maze of If will untap a creature that is attacking. The Maze of If, therefore, cannot prevent the Sarah Angel from attacking, because it cannot make the Sarah Angel untap. Okay, I'm just going to break in again. This is wild to me, reading this answer. Absolutely wild. So, it means that back in the day, you couldn't use your maze against an attacking Sarah Angel because it didn't tap. I mean, that's just amazing. That means that all the creatures in old school, they're not that many, but the ones that don't have to tap when they attack, and they call it Vigilance these days, that you can stop them with a maze of if. That's some really cool interaction. Obviously, these days, you can. And in general, this is a nice reminder to all of us to check the current rules and the current oracle text on cards because that makes a big difference. Okay, I just wanted to share that with you before we moved on, but now we're ready. Let's continue with question 16. Question 16. If my opponent casts a mind twist on me, can I use the reflecting mirror to redirect the spell? The answer, yes. Mind twist has a specific target, therefore it may be reflected. Question 17. I have a preacher and a safe haven in play. I used the preacher to gain control of my opponent's creatures one at a time. Then I put them in my safe haven. What happens when I sacrifice the safe haven? The answer? The creatures that are in the safe haven will come back into play on the side of the player who summoned them. The preacher's effects are dependent upon it being tapped to control a creature, so the preacher could gain control of one of them, but not all of them. Question 18. I have some creatures in my safe haven. What happens if my opponent plays a phantasmal terrain on it? Answer: The creatures stay in the safe haven while the safe haven is behaving like some other basic land type. They cannot come back into play as long as the safe haven is something else. If the phantasmal terrain is disenchanted somehow, the safe haven reverts back to normal and the creatures may return to play when their controller wishes. Question 19. It's the same scenario as in question 18, but a sinkhole is played on my safe haven. What happens then? The answer? The safe haven is destroyed, obviously. All the creatures that were in the safe haven are still removed from the game, this time permanently. Okay, and that was the article. Those were the 19 questions asked when uh, The Dark just got released. So the duelists selected these questions to discuss in their magazine. And uh, it's super interesting to me to read it because, you know, for example, that, that talk about can I use the reflecting mirror against Mind Twist? I think that would be absolutely brilliant if you could do that in real life. If, if you get to do that, please record it, send it to me because then you've broken magic and I've got to send you some kind of award. That would be absolutely amazing. But I think just in general, it's super interesting to read these old questions back uh, because they give you an idea of what the players were thinking at the time. And it makes absolute sense to me that when you see cards like Save Haven, Preacher, Bull Lightning, Reflecting Mirror, when you see these cards for the first time, that you've got some questions to ask about them and that you're trying to figure out what can I do? You know, it's really cool to read that one question about Preacher and Save Haven. So there was already somebody there that saw that synergy between the two cards. You know, I can steal something, 
put it in my safe haven and then I can steal another creature from my opponent, basically wiping the board of your opponent. I also really love the questions about Phantasmal Terrain, that is just really funny to me as that card sees very little play currently in old school. Maybe it should see some more play because it's, I mean, it's pretty cool to use your Phantasmal Terrain and you know, transform a land. That's just a really cool magic in my opinion. Anyway, this is the uh, episode of today of the Duelist podcast. This is already episode number eight. It's been a joy for me to read this article to you. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you did, please leave a like to show your appreciation. For now, thank you very much for watching or listening, I should say, because this is a podcast. And now we are continuing with the end scroll. Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.